so this video basically um, picks up where the last one left off. Uh, you can watch that one. It's Onyx, um, like the week one video. He'll have his own playlist. Uh, Onyx is a three-year-old Mustang that we um, trained through the TIP program. He was adopted out. He'd been with his owner for this past year. Now he's three and he's ready to be saddle trained. So that's why he's here. Uh, so this is um, about the mid week two with him. And Isidro was just prepping him um, to, to really do a, a good first ride. Um, so he does a lot of this. And we had a ton of footage I had to cut down. And even so, this video is pretty long. Uh, but he did a, he does a lot of this just up and down, up and down business. Um, and turning his head, making sure that, um, you know, he's soft to that rain uh, so that he has that when he gets on him. And um, I'm just kind of showing you that he goes up and down, up and down on both sides. He doesn't push it too much. He, he does a really good job of balancing, um, pushing the horse a little bit out of their comfort zone, but not too far that something bad happens. Uh, so he, he did this like a whole lot and he'll let him move around a little bit to kind of feel his weight while he's kind of hanging on the side there. Then he felt like it was okay to throw his leg over and he'd gotten up and down on both sides quite a bit before that. So this is the first time he's thrown his leg over and you can see Onyx is like pretty cool with it. He just kind of wants to check him out and see what he's doing up there. Uh, that's you have to be careful with. Don't let him bite the, the stirrup because they can get their teeth hung up on it. Um, so he's watching him like he's checking it out, but he's not going to let him bite it. So you try to bite it there and he's like, no. And he gets down and, and obviously this horse is totally ready for this. Uh, he's not real bothered by that at all. And then this is real typical. So it'll get off and kind of walk away, um, give him a little bit of a break. And that's important too. So then he's going to try getting on this side again, swing his leg over, putting his foot in the stirrup. And then a lot of people just go and try and kick off and ride here. And, and Sidro's not going to do that. Um, he's going to get back off. So he's breaking things down in as many little pieces as he possibly can. Uh, and then he wants to make sure that this horse doesn't get sticky footed. Uh, cause sometimes if they get, you know, stuck and they don't move, then they explode. Uh, so he's just getting him to kind of disengage his move his feet a little bit, um, to loosen that up. So he's not sitting there being braced and you can see the horse is super relaxed. You would think that he's done this before, but this is really the first time he swung a leg over him. Um, so that was a little bit of a baby move there. He was like, Whoa, what do I do with this extra weight? So it doesn't weigh very much, but, uh, it's something up there. He's just making sure that he can kind of pull his head around there. Um, he has a combination of a, um, like a loping hackamore with a snaffle. Uh, so they kind of work together um, before he'll transition him to just the plain snaffle. So initially he rode him in just the halter. Well, not really ride him, but getting on and off him in just the halter. Actually, maybe that's what he still has there. That looks like it is the halter. My bad. So he's got the bridle on him but he's using the halter um, to turn his head and stuff. Maybe that was the first time he put the bridle on him, if I remember correctly. Um, so he's able to play with that bit and kind of fiddle with it, but he's not actually asking to do anything with it. He's The reins are attached to the halter, you can see there. I remember I cut that part out and I just forgot that I did that. And then he's just checking. Like, can I you know, touch him with his tail? Can I touch him all back there? Is he goosey? Is he grabbing his butt? He's not doing any of that stuff, so this horse is totally ready for a ride. And that's it. That was a that was the end of that session. He did a bunch of groundwork, and then that was like kind of the end of that session. Um, and he's not going to just push him and ride. I, I do it a little bit differently. Um, I like to get everything done in one day after I've done because I do a lot more groundwork than Isidro does. So this is how he does it, and he's very effective. Obviously, the horse is not upset at all. So that was it for that day. And come back and here's another day that um, I saw him, he was working with him, so I grabbed my camera uh, to get some video. And you can see the horse is super relaxed. So this horse is more on the, he has a lot more woe than go. And um, so you have to kind of work with what you got. So that's good. So we can do things a little bit differently with this one. 
Um, he's not really worried about the rider up there. And other than that initial, like kind of bucking a little bit when he first had that saddle on, he hasn't really had the energy or drive or desire to buck. Not really his jam. And so same thing, he's letting them, he's letting them check him out, but he's not letting them kind of bite there because you can get in real big trouble if they get their teeth hung up on a stirrup like that. Just check and make sure he's giving to that. I think this time he's actually riding with uh, the reins on the snaffle bit. Um, so the halter is gone and he's, he's now riding with that. Yeah, he's got the reins on the snaffle bit. So it's a combination loping hackamore and a snaffle. Um, so it's a little easier transition for the horse. And he's just got some vet rep on that nose on that uh, loping hackamore because it is kind of a little a bit stiff. So he wants to know that he can make that hind end over when he wants. And so he's asking with his leg and then he doesn't, can't tap him with the whip a little bit. It's the exact same thing you get on the ground. And this horse goes, yep, yeah, okay. I know what that means. So if he ever gets in any trouble, he wants to be sure that he can do this. He can pull that head around and get that hind end to disengage um, to kind of shut down anything that might happen. And now he's trying to get that hind end to move and then get him to kind of walk forward. So instead of just kicking him while he's up there, which he doesn't, he doesn't know what that means, um, he's going to do this and then just kind of let him go to walk forward and there we go. And that's how you get your first forward movement if you don't have somebody on the ground. And a lot of times Sido doesn't have somebody on the ground, so this is how he does it. He's kind of guiding him there. He's a little confused. Not quite sure where to go, so he's going to switch over to the other side and get that side to disengage and then have him walk forward. So this is his real first official ride. Um, he doesn't really know how to steer yet. Uh, the whole idea is just to get him to move forward carrying the rider. He did ground drive him though, so um, he does have some idea. It's not completely foreign to him uh, that when you pull one direction on the rein that you're supposed to follow it. But I really like how uh, this horse is just totally chill. This is, uh, this is really nice when we have these Mustangs that just, you know, that we've started or somebody's done a really good job just kind of starting them and they really trust people. It's really hard to fix it when they, they don't have the space and when we get these in like this that are just like, they trust people, they like people, uh, they've had good experiences, they've been started properly. Um, it's really kind of nice to train them because they're, they just fall right in. And he's doing pretty good for his first little ride. So Sidro likes to just walk the first time. Uh, doesn't ask more than that of them. Uh, like I said, I like to walk, trot, and canter on the first day, but I do, I do quite a bit more groundwork. So uh, it doesn't really matter. There's no right or wrong way. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Um, so when people get really adamant and be like, no, you have to do this on this day or whatever, I'm just kind of like, um, oh, I guess he did trot that day. Um, I'm just more like, you got to do whatever you're comfortable with and whatever you think your horse can handle. Uh, there really is no right or wrong answer as long as you're, you're you know, progressing toward the same outcome with a, a happy, content horse that understands what's being asked of them. And so he doesn't pull back with both reins. He's just kind of, that's how he gets him to stop by bringing his head around and just being patient. And he kind of disengages that hind end a little bit figure out that he's supposed to stop and soften that mouth. There we go. And he's kind of like, what's this thing in my mouth? There. That's kind of a good view to see what he was after. And he still walked forward, so he's asking him to stop again by just turning his head. And he softens, he let him go. And then he'll just hang out so that they kind of get really comfortable um, standing um, and, you know, develop this horse that, that can't sit still because uh, it starts here. Uh, every, all this stuff really matters. So 
Um, you want to not create any bad, bad habits this early on either. Get her going the other direction. He's going to ask him to trot. And, um, so he's giving him, you can't hear it because I turned it down because the, the wind was so bad. It's been really windy. And so um, he has a verbal cue for trot. So the horse kind of knows that he's supposed to do something and move forward. So it's not like he's up there kicking and kicking and flaying on his legs. I really don't like that. Um, I think it makes the horses kind of brace and tense and they don't know what it means. So if you're up there just kicking your legs all the time, I think they just get bracy and confused and tense. Uh, so if you do a really good job on the ground of, of giving him a cue to trot, then when you're under saddle, they're like, oh, I remember what that is. And then they just kind of um, start trotting. And then it's less of a, of a bracy, tense thing, and you're not ending up desensitizing them with your legs. And that was great. Like, he got off, and he could care less. He's super relaxed. Really great stuff. So this is a whole other day. Um, he's already uh, did all the, the stuff that he does before, Does you know works on the ground and get up on and off, and then starts asking him to walk, and now he's working more on the trot. So like I said this horse is a little bit more on the... Um, conserving energy side of things so um, the goal with him is to get him to move forward and stay in the gate that you put him in without kind of dying and being lazy and without having to nag 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 them to death so as opposed to like say a horse that um, is really sensitive and wants to go all the time and uh, you would have a different uh, action plan and this guy's um, He's a little on the lazy side. So I think this is his first lope, which was great. Went really, really well. Uh, same thing, he has a specific cue for lope that he taught him on the ground. So when he's on, you know, in the saddle, when he gives him the cue, the horse remembers, oh yeah, I remember what I was supposed to do when, when he does that. So he made sure it was really good on the ground, so then it just translates really well under saddle. And so this horse is going to be... Uh, like a hotter horse, you probably would lope less and then bring him down and get him to chill. Uh, a, a lazier horse like this, he's actually going to make him lope more um, and stay in that lope until he tells him not to be in that lope anymore. Um, so you just you have to balance out whatever the personality and natural traits of the horse is um, and not treat them all exactly the same because they're not. change direction so steering's not great still but you know not too bad he can change directions he's following it uh, he's just swinging that hind end more than moving his shoulders and that's okay he's still baby steps in the beginning and so here I think he might have tapped him a little with his with his crop when he gave him the, the kisses to lope and um, a nice little lope big stride I think we measured this guy and he's 15 not quite 15 one the three-year-old. So his whole goal here is just to get him to stay moving forward. See how he kind of died there? He's going to ask him, no, you have to stay in this lope until I tell you to do something else. Uh, and that's his goal right now, is stay forward, because we don't have a lot of forward with this horse. So um, he's got to make sure that, that that forward balances out the amount of wool this horse has. And then, of course, he's just like, this is the end of his session, just kind of chilling and hanging out. And he's just working on steering. I cut a lot of this out. He was working on steering, so making him do small circles, working on steering. He picked up the wrong lead there. They asked him to go again. He balanced himself out. See how the is just not really reacting a whole lot? Picks up the wrong lead. Oh, well, who cares? We just need him to go forward. Onyx has graduated to the big arena 
Um, and it's a big arena. It's a it's 150 feet by 300 feet, so it's it's not small. Um, and and it's way out in the middle of a huge huge pasture, far away from other horses. Uh, so it's kind of good for them to learn how to, uh, you know, not have to rely on other horses so much. And so he gets on him, and and like every if if you've been watching our videos, you know, Sitter will sit there for a while. We both do this before we walk off, so we don't ever teach our horses to walk off when we're mounting. You'll notice they all stand really well when we mount. And um, so he's just kind of walking around. Um, I think maybe this was the second time he'd ever been out there in this big arena. Uh, so, and this is the, um, maybe the end of week three of training. Uh, so he's coming along really well. And, oh, this is funny. So there's, <laughs> There's a banner on the fence that blew down, so it's just kind of hanging there. And it's a big white, you know, banner plastic thingy. It's kind of scary. So this is great. I mean, this horse, he's spooking, right? And so um, I kind of left this in here because I wanted his owner to see that, I mean, he's got a, you know, he's spooking, but like, I mean, everybody would love to have a horse that spooks like this, right? Like he's, he's not doing anything really fast. And you see, Siddle's not making a big deal about it. Uh, he just got to a point where... The horse was comfortable being at that that spot and the sitter was happy with being that far away and then just let him rest there and then um he didn't make a big deal about like yeah you're gonna go up to there you're gonna do this blah 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 no 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 he's still a baby horse um just kind of standing there letting him know that it was it's okay to relax near something scary is enough of a of a training uh you know session and and the, then the horse is knowing that you know, he didn't make a big deal about it, so he doesn't really have a reason to be afraid of it. Uh, if we made a big deal about it, then he'd be like, yeah, that thing's scary right there. Uh, so he's just working on steering. And this is all he does initially in these big arenas, just kind of changing direction. And he, see how he drops his shoulder there, so he changes direction to kind of help him pick his body up. It's at the same time, teaching him to follow that rein. When he puts his hand out, he should follow that rein. And it's a lot of repetition like this. Um, to get him to just follow whenever you pick up that rein and to be soft. At the same time, he's learning how to carry a rider out in this bigger arena and moving out. And uh, Sido's got a like a soft feel in his mouth. Uh, so that's something else that's new is um, riding with some contact. And this horse is gonna be a dressage horse. So um, we do want him to learn to carry some contact um, because it's easy, different than like a, a Western horse where you know, we would train it a little bit differently. So you can see he wants to drop that shoulder a lot when he's turning and it's all just baby stuff. Um, a good way to like stop that is what a stroke keeps doing is just making him go the other way. So that's not a bad little circle he's doing there. Um, I like this horse has a nice cadence too. Like he's not getting faster and slower. He's maintaining kind of a nice cadence and that's great too. Something else you want him to learn. So it's just a lot of this, a lot of boring stuff. Um, probably be uh, two to three weeks before we put another video out just because it's a lot of this repetitive kind of stuff. This is what horse trading is. So nothing really exciting happening for a little while. That's kind of what he does. Looks like he's got a big trot. <laughs> So you see how he stopped in there? He just kind of made him do a smaller circle till he, he came down in gate. He didn't pull on both reins. Uh, that will come later. We teach him to back and stuff. Um, but right now he doesn't know what that means. Um, so he just pulls him down into a smaller circle and he walks and then lets him go. And right now what he's doing is, um, so this horse, like I said before, uh, is an energy conserver. So he wants to kind of just plod along. Um, and Isidro, you could see he's making him kind of move out in this walk a little bit. Like, no, you don't get to just plot along. He wants him to march along. So he's got a better walk, which he'll need for dressage too. They don't really like him just being kind of lazy and plodding along. They want a good forward walk. That's what he's working on right now. So all this stuff kind of matters. Um, you got to work with, you know, the particular personality horse that you have. And this one needs, needs forward work.